So in this behind the scenes video, I'll be focusing on the last three songs on the album. For the animation as well, some unusual compositional techniques that I used here. For the animation on Rainy Day Recess, I used a Mac OS 7 emulator that you can find online for free. And here you're seeing me draw these patterns in real time, and then sped up later. I wanted the vibe of this song to be reminiscent of a rainy day recess during elementary school and all the times I spent in the school's computer lab playing with Kid Picks and Appleworks. I actually think that Appleworks was one of my favorite computer games as a kid in the late 90s. I know it's not really considered a game, but to me it was the perfect platform for geometrical sketches and because there was really no objective and it just forced me to come up with my own designs and make them as entertaining as possible. Then in 2014, when I was a junior in college, I randomly discovered fractal animation and began playing around with Mandelbulb 3D. Right away, it was one of the most incredible things that I had ever seen, and somehow it seemed to match the compositional style that I was just then starting to develop. And then a few years later, when I saw that both Meshuggah and Tigran Hamasian used fractal animation in their music videos, I knew that I had to use some of my renderings for a music video at some point. So this is the Mandelbulb 3D program, which I would use to render out all the still images, and then run them through a time-lapse assembler to create the video file. It was a super fun challenge to not have the slightest idea what any of these menus or settings meant, so I just had to experiment for hours punching in random numbers and seeing what happened. I had absolutely no clue what very DE stop on FOV, race dot multiplier, step width limiter, or step count for binary search meant, but after 20 or 30 test renders, I started to get the hang of it, to a very basic level at least. This program has a fairly steep initial learning curve, but once you have a basic understanding of it, you can generate some pretty incredibly visually stunning images and animations. Once you get past that first learning curve, you kind of hit a plateau where you'll be able to render some cool videos, but then the real challenge is to be able to smoothly transition through at least five or six fractal formulas in a single seamless video. It's the kind of program where there's so many possibilities that you kind of have to develop somewhat of a unique style to make smooth and compelling videos. But compared with what's actually possible, I still have a long way to go. And there are some fractal art creators on YouTube that do just an amazing job with stylistic pacing and visual post-production of all their renderings. All of the fractal renders that I used on this album were made back in 2015. And at the end of the video, I'll show you some earlier ones that I made in 2014. Now for the acoustic palindromes, I doubt anyone could tell just by listening to it, but many parts of A World Within are melodically the same or very similar when the audio is played in reverse. I knew that I was writing the melody in palindrome structures when I wrote it back in 2014, but it wasn't until I was actually doing the mixing on this project that I tried to play the audio backwards, and it turns out that a lot of the melodic palindromes show through when the audio is reversed. Here's a small section of the original score, and you can see how the contour of each line is symmetrical if folded down the middle. So having a structural symmetry to the score allows the audio recording of those same parts to create an acoustic palindrome. So moving on to Perpetual Acceleration, as the title suggests, it's basically a song that has the tempo constantly increasing at a steady rate for the whole time. And that's basically what a Risset Rhythm is, a song with a continually increasing or decreasing tempo, 
which is the rhythmic equivalent of a shepherd's tone, which is an audio illusion that seems to go up or down in pitch forever. So a piece of music that uses a riset rhythm doesn't really have a tempo, but something you might call a tempo slope or the rate of acceleration. So in this piece, I had the tempo double every 16 bars from 80 BPM to 160 BPM. And once you're at 160, it's really the same thing as 80, and then the cycle continues. You can see this in that blue tempo automation graph near the top of the screen. Once you have this tempo automation laid out, that's really just the basic framework grid for how to construct the beat and song on top of that. To make the beat as seamless as possible, I used many layers of volume automation to fade parts in and out as they follow the increasing tempo. And I like to think of this riset rhythm as the rhythmic equivalent of a slinky on an escalator. And yeah, that's a real thing, just look it up on YouTube. When scrubbing back and forth really fast in the logic timeline, you can see how the volume automation was drawn in. And as if that's not enough, the intro to this song is also an acoustic palindrome, because why not? So for the last part of this video, I'll show you some of my earliest fractal renderings from 2014, and as always, thanks for watching.